and then it extended the languages uh, C sharp and Visual Basic um, to have a convenient syntax for this language in the British Ferries. Now in F sharp, they did not extend the language, they wrote a monad for it, uh, but basically it is quite it is doing the same. A query um, is something that is a query expression, you iterate over something, you filter something, you order it, you select a few um, subparts of uh, what you have iterated over and return it and do so more or less uh, at the beginning the query only represents the query like a um, prepared SQL statement and this works against uh, SQL server, SQL car it works also against objects, uh, like lists, arrays, or anything like that. Um, how does the F-sharp version make use of this language integrated query? Um, by the way, um, for the SQL types, um, most of the heavy lifting is done through the .NET types already. Why? Um, these .NET connections implement iQueryL and the .NET collection types have, um, um, automat or have available an explicit conversion uh, where you say as queryable so you take a collection say as queryable and then you get back an iQueryL interface which is uh, strongly typed which returns a specific type of values and then you have um, these extension methods in link for where um, um, uh, find find or default first, nth, like give me the 15th value. And what does the query monad do? It more or less um, takes these um, types and transforms stuff like for, in, do, and select, and where um, into these already existing um, link functions, mostly. And is quite convenient because they did not have to implement all the SQL stuff themselves. And yeah, these uh, kind of queries actually, um, when you say they are where something and you write uh, a lambda function, where for uh, instance x dot property is uh, larger than 5, it does not actually create a function delegate uh, which you can invoke but this is automatically escaped into an expression, in a link expression. And although a sharp has its own expression type, it is able to translate its own expressions directly without your own um, intervention into link expressions. So you can, a sharp can make full use of all these uh, link expression things. And they are not the other way around, of course. And yeah, so what does it do? It, um, the monad transforms it through this desugarizing into uh, expressions of bind, to return, for, select. This is then converted into C sharp expression trees, and this is then passed into the iQueryable um, of uh, link. And so you can access objects, collections, and also databases. And in this specific uh, thing we have even a special feature, one of those features which I showed you at the very beginning. Here we have type Northwind, old data service HTTP something, let DB get data context. This is again an invocation of a type provider. The old data service is a type provider which takes a URL. Um, old data is like a JSON REST API with schema, so with data types defined. And it's completely a REST JSON service, but additionally it has some structure in its uh, primary document where the schema is described, and also, and this is the bad part, a few of the schema is only available in the, um, in the uh, specification, but you would not need the, the schema to access the REST service, but if you have it, then you get the nice convenience that you can take an old data service from a URL, read the schema, generate the types, again, static types, which are available at compile time, 
and then use queries, really language queries over these types. And here we say query for customer and DB customers. By the way, Northwinds database, I think everybody knows this was this uh, age old access database example where we have, I think, um, customers and products and um, something like a store where um, items are stored and prices and everything. Um, and yeah, okay, here we go through the customers and then select contact name and phone. And sequence.eater is nothing but a um, normal F sharp function, it has nothing to do with any model because the query model already um, made um, out of this specific query something which implements the normal uh, sequence uh, interface. And sequence eater just means um, do this function for each item. And here we do print fn um, dollar, um, percent a, which is more or less print fn current with a literal string which says print media object. And so it takes, because you have exactly uh, one um, specifier in here, takes one argument and this is the argument of the sequence, uh, the item of the place in the sequence, which is a tuple. A tuple, by the way, I don't know, have I explained them already? This is how you write a tuple. You open a parenthesis, write an item, you make a comma, you write the next item, and continue that until it's too boring, and then you close it with the closing parenthesis. That's a tuple. And that's all to it. There's nothing more. A uh, tuple is a um, fixed size collection of items of arbitrary type. Now, okay, this more or less prints all uh, pairs of contact names and phones in the database. And I tried it out, it actually works. Uh, uh, need, not with that URL, of course, I had to shorten it out because otherwise we would be there on the right with the Okay, in the second line of the example, um, probably I've read too many Java code, but I expect that between the less, less than and greater than symbols, um, I expected some kind of type, but, but here I should really think of this as an argument, or? This is, um, by the way, I know what it does. I have not yet looked how to use this uh, kind of stuff on self. Okay. But yes, this is a type argument. Okay. And F sharp supports type arguments which are not types but which are values, like C templates. And it also supports named type arguments. So for instance, if you would want to access this old data service with asynchronous queries, where everything is do, uh, doing asynchronously or more or less, you want a query to return not a sequence but a sequence of async values, like we had just before with our async model, then you would write here at the end of northing.svc, then you would say comma, async is true. Okay. And then it would query asynchronously to this service. And this means that this query model then would return a sequence of async values, or an async sequence. Um, I actually haven't looked. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, query monad continued. Um, yes, this is what I um, explained just before. This iQueryable type of T is this link type from .NET itself. And by the way, because you have not yet seen the syntax, this um, apostrophe T is the way how you denote um, type arguments in a sharp. In C sharp, you only have um, less than type argument name and greater than. And of course, in F sharp, it's different, but it's uh, different for a good reason uh, because that way the grammar of the language is a little bit simpler. And all type arguments always, at any place, always start with the apostrophe, except the underscore, which is the pattern for anything goes. And yeah. Ah, okay, we are at the summary. Great. So, uh, programming styles. Functional, object-oriented, procedural, metaprogramming. Um, all those are supported. Um, and sometimes uh, this metaprogramming is... Um, uh, uh, what? 
is meter programming, um, it, uh, a sharp people say to it language oriented programming. Um, what do they mean? Um, domain specific languages. A term many people know. It is um, what you, for instance, um, use for when you program in C++ with Boost, where you have um, ESL, the short the abbreviation for domain specific language for regular expressions. Or there also exists a DSL for SQL queries, where you write with C++ types an SQL query, which then of course is type safe and also injection safe. It automatically generates the um, prepared statements. In Common Lisp, the basic idea is you don't write library, you design a language in which your problem is easy to solve, and then you solve your problem in that language. And this is what uh, language-oriented programming, um, the term, is about. And it goes in a sharp, more or less, to the use of monads plus operator overloading um, to make a syntax so convenient for a, sp a specific problem type that more or less um, even, even a novice could do it. Yeah. Typing. Now there are a few um, summarizations which might not have come out in the previous examples. Strong typing, yes. It's .NET, so there it's not possible to do a reinterpret cast, to um, say it uh, easily. You cannot access any memory at, uh, address directly, except with p invoke, in which case you have to mark your assembly as unsafe and it's tainted, and no safe assembly can call an unsafe assembly, except for those that Microsoft has signed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere the uh, virtual machine must be implemented itself, and those uh, the ones which are unsafe and can still be called. But more or less, raw memory access, as long as you stay in F sharp, as long as you stay in .NET, it's strong typing, it's strict typing, no conversions, it's static typing, so just because we don't write type names anywhere, except for maybe once, um, doesn't mean that we always, like in Lisp for instance, we always just pass or Ruby. Ruby is an excellent example for this. Um, you pass types anywhere and then when you access it, you check if it works and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't work, you get bad, bad luck. And I actually like dynamic programming quite much. It's very flexible, especially when uh, rapid development, especially when you're exploring a uh, thing. But, well, a sharp is static, uh, statically typed, and so all the types must be able to be resolved at compile time, which means no ambiguities. This means if you write something, and it could be two different types, the compiler doesn't know it, then it doesn't say, well, Let's just go with it, and if it works, it works, like in Ruby, like in Lisp. But it would give a um, compile time error, even if all your invo invocation of the functions, uh, all your invocations of the function, would always only call the correct version. So really, it must be resolved at compile time. The convenience function. Also, why is it still convenient, although it is so strictly typed? Uh, because we have a hindley milner style type deduction. What does it mean? If you have a type somewhere, and you use the variable which has a type somewhere else, you know that within this expression, this type must go there, and if this expression then can only be valid with one specific type, it will probably have this type. And you go from top to bottom, and more or less whenever you say, well, there is no type, but what do I already know? Then it, the compiler automatically adds what it already knows. And if this works out to be a complete description of the expression, it's done. Then, of course, it's garbage collected. We are on .NET. Uh, garbage collected means memory is automatically reclaimed on the heap. And the disadvantage of like all garbage collected languages, we don't have a C++ or E style uh, resource acquisition is initialization idiom, which is a misnomer, but which means we do not have automatic um, resource, um, what was this, um, 
Resource release, yes, it doesn't automatically release uh, resources at the end of.